Welcome everyone to this session about the Client Protection Pathway, which is an initiative that is led by Cerise and SPTF. I'm delighted to be with you today. I'm Anne-Laure Béag. I've been working for years and years uh, in the financial inclusive finance industry and particularly on advancing client protection. Um, and I'm delighted to have you all here uh, with us to be able to introduce you to this initiative. Um, first, um, in order to have a slight idea about uh, who is here and uh, understand a little bit your knowledge, um, with the help of our hosts, uh, I would like to ask you to answer uh, to the following questions that will come up to your uh, up on your screen uh, so that we can just understand a little bit who is here. So host, please, Emmanuel, if you could launch the first question about who, which, what kind of stakeholder you represent. Okay, that's for the first question. Um, so the, the results are that we have researchers, students, or consultants in the room and uh, investors, DFIs or donors and one association. Thank you, welcome everyone. Uh, now, Let's um, let's launch the second question to understand how familiar you are with client protection. Ah, so I did. I I, I launched it. <laughs> apparently. Okay, a few answers missing. You might may not having found your preferred answer. Um, we see a small majority who have only a high level of knowledge. Um, a few have already worked with the smart campaign tools. I see a few names I know here. Uh, Lovely to have you with us. Next, last question. Is your level of familiarity with what SPTF and Cerise do? Okay, a few, a few participants are, haven't answered yes yet. A few seconds more. <coughs> okay, and so these are the results that I hope you see on your screen. Um, so it's interesting to see that you um, more or less uh, no already so this will I, I won't have to go back into the into the early early stage but I did want to give you a bit of context to start with um, the client protection pathway stems uh, and was built uh, obviously uh, from the 
huge work that Smart Campaign uh, did for a decade. Uh, Smart Campaign's closure last year left a gap in the industry. Ah, sorry, uh, left a gap in the industry. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this gap was also a huge opportunity for Cerise and SPTF. Uh, to uh, take over the, the maintenance and uh, the ownership of the client protection assessment tools and uh, update of standards. What happened uh, at Smart Campaign's closure um, was that as SPTF, together with Cerise, launched a, a high cons a large consultation process um, with the key stakeholders in our industry, namely social investors, uh, rating agencies, who were also certification bodies, and FSPs. And uh, the, this consultation period helped us understand what uh, would be and should be the future of client protection. You know, uh, probably that client protection had always been part of uh, the universal standards that are managed by SPTF and were also part of the SPI4 evaluation tool that is managed by Cerise. These client protection uh, standards and indicators were then at the time um, managed by Smart Campaign. When we conducted the consultation for the future of client protection, we understood uh, these primary demands. Uh, the first thing that stemmed from this consultation was that people wanted to keep client protection as a standalone product. Although they are part, these standards are part of the universal standards, the stakeholders still wanted to be able to identify those client protection standards, which we um, generally use the do no harm, that are a do, a do no harm approach compared to social performance standards who are rather a do good approach. What we heard as well from investors, social investors, wanted an easy way to identify committed financial service providers. So this uh, has also been included in our response. And the last thing that stemmed really strongly from the consultation uh, from FSPs, so from the field, is that FSPs needed a kind of roadmap and demonstration and help support in uh, seeing progress and not only the ultimate achievement of certification. So hearing this, our response um, was the client protection pathway, uh, which is about achieving client protection one step at a time. And uh, we've designed it into these three steps. We will go into the details of these three steps. Um, these are have been uh, identified to help an FSP um, implement excellency in their client protection journey. It's a tool, a roadmap that we provide for FSPs uh, with the support and their uh, buy-in. Um, and what we expect here is not a specific time frame for FSPs to move along the journey, what we expect is simply to, for them to see where they stand and how they can do to move forward in these steps. So the three steps that you can see on this visual here um, are the following. The first one is about committing to implement. The second one is about assessing and improving practices. And the third one is about demonstrating progress and achievements and is equivalent to the certification, in fact. So let's start 
um, going into the details of the step one. As you uh, may know and remember, Smart Campaign had an endorsement process. This step one is an endorsement plus plus. What we've heard uh, when we consulted, consulted the stakeholders, we heard uh, that endorsement was just not enough. There were plenty of signatories, but there was no measurement or no disclosure about what is actually put into place and in practice. So this step one requires slightly more than a signature. Um, there is a signature um, to commit to client protection as an FSP. And the second subset, sub step in this step is about disclosing a CP evaluation. This helps address uh, what uh, investors asked us to be able to uh, identify properly those FSPs who are committed to implement. And how is this materialized? On our website, on the SPTF website, FSPs are invited to sign up to the pathway. They fill a form. They put they they are asked what kind of client protection evaluation they have already conducted however they do not have to provide this evaluation uh, at at the moment of signing up. We want to broaden up the market. We want to have FSPs who are absolutely not familiar with client protection join the pathway as well. And this first step of committing also allows those FSPs who are at the very early stage of, client, of implementing client protection to simply get familiar with these client protection standards and indicators. So we offer them this six months window where they are invited to um, up download the self-assessment tool and conduct a self-assessment of their client protection practices. Within these six months, the FSP is going to be reminded to submit their proof of self-assessment. Um, if they don't, they are reminded several times. If they don't, they are considered unlisted. But if they do, they appear on the SPTF website where we have a dedicated page and further along the um, our workshop, uh, you will be giving the several links uh, to this so you can see this live on the website. And so we we, we publish a list of those FSPs we have joined. And uh, we also list there all the documents that they have reported as having been conducted. Um, those documents, uh, I'm going to get a, a little technical here for those who are familiar with these tools. Those documents that are accepted as disclosure documents for this commitment step are the CP assessment tool. So previously with Smart Campaign, it used to be called the GSQ, Getting Started Questionnaire. This is um, a document that can be accepted. Today we have the Client Protection Self-Assessment Tool. Um, we also uh, can receive um, documents such as SPI for those FSPs who have conducted an SPI. Um, that includes client protection indicators. We also accept a Linus document. We um, uh, receive as well um, code of conduct assessments in India. This is very relevant, uh, hopefully in, in the European Union as well. Um, we as well obviously uh, take social ratings if FSPs have conducted them and uh, eventually client protection certifications. Um, so 
I believe uh, maybe uh, we may have some questions at this step before I move further towards step two. Uh, and since this is a workshop, uh, please don't hesitate. I will stop here for a while and take any questions at this stage on this step. Um, and don't hesitate to activate your microphone, put your camera on so we can exchange. Hello, um, this is uh, Pierre Casal from CID Apemiga. I was wondering uh, when FSPs submit a proof, uh, do, does the document is being uh, published online, the conclusion, etc., or it is just serves as a proof that they did it uh, seriously? Yes, thanks, Pierre, for the question, because you, <laughs> I forgot to mention this, indeed, yeah. Um, no, we don't publish the document. We receive it as SPTF. Um, and we look at it, obviously, to make sure uh, it's not a grossly <laughs> grocery list, um, but we don't publish it. However, we do ask for a contact email, uh, and this contact email is published next to the name of the FSP, so that interested stakeholders uh, who are looking at this list of committed partners um, can directly contact the FSP and request the documents that are reported and listed on our list. Do we have any other questions at this stage? Okay, so now let's move to step two. Step two for me is really the core, the core of the CP pathway, uh, because this is where everything is taking place and this is where everything makes the most sense. Because in the end, uh, what we expect with the client protection pathway is actually having a client centric um, way of operating in the field with clients. So at this stage, FSPs, they have assessed their practices. And with this assessment of practices, and uh, when you will be able to download, when you'll have a chance to look at the self-assessment tool, you'll find this. You will be able, FSPs will be able to identify their gaps uh, compared to the client protection indicators and create an action plan based on these uh, gaps that have been identified. At this stage, when you have an action plan, the idea is to move towards improvement. And we at Cerise and SPTF uh, support this implementation phase with um, several several elements. The first one is uh, providing and supporting the use of tools. Uh, two key tools in, in, in this stage, the SPI. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, there is, I invite you to go and visit Cerise's website where there is an SPI online tool. Uh, SPI being uh, the tool that has all the universal standards for social performance management and include the client protection indicators. We also have a separate client protection assessment tool uh, that is available for free on our website. And uh, this is uh, constantly maintained and we support the use of these tools. Um, we also offer trainings, webinars, uh, we will dive into uh, further the minimum requirements for client protection, so uh, we are developing currently a specific client protection implementation series to help small and medium FSPs who are just starting on the pathway and getting familiar with client protection, helping them identify those key indicators um, for client protection. We also have a resource library on our website with several case studies, tools, examples, um, and, and, um, and implementation guide. 
Once the FSP has signed up and joined the pathway as well, they are also included in our monthly newsletters. So to be keep always up to date with everything that is new uh, and any upcoming webinars that we can propose. So that's on one side uh, with the website. Um, we also have uh, what we call the SPM Pro Network, uh, Social Performance Management for SPM. Uh, this is a database of uh, available consultants and experts that have been trained either by Cerise or by SPTF um, on these specific topics that are social performance and client protection. These experts uh, can be can can be used and contacted uh, directly through our database uh, you can contact FSPs can contact them directly to uh, be involved at any sub step of this step. Uh, for instance, they are um, qualified auditors for social performance and in the future for the client protection as well. So they will be able to support and conduct an assessment of uh, practices in client protection. This helps provide a kind of independent and objective opinion and uh, analyze gaps uh, with an external point of view. They can also help create the action plan because with their experience and um, uh, and uh, general knowledge of best practices, they will be able to focus the FSP's priorities and make a tailored action plan. And then obviously, uh, last step for improvement, uh, these experts are also here to provide technical assistance, uh, which can also be um, used by investors who have a technical assistance facility. So this step is about assessing, creating an action plan, and con continuously improving practices. Do you have, I will stop here for a minute, do you have any questions at this stage? Okay, so I do have a question in the chat box. What is the role of national association in each country can play to ensure the pathway being implemented in a sustainable way for each country context? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. The, 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 the best role you can play, and we will get to there, the best role is spreading the word and encouraging a member, your member FSPs to join the pathway. Uh, this would uh, be the very, very first step that a national association can do. And then further on, um, contact us and uh, maybe organize trainings uh, for FSPs to get familiar, depending indeed, as you say, on the country context and how, how mature the country is in terms of client protection practices. I have another question. Um, would FSPs pay for pro network members on a fee for service basis? Yes, absolutely. This we provide the database of experts, uh, but then it's a direct um, uh, it's a direct relationship between uh, the consultant and the client. Are there other costs to participate in the pathway uh, towards? us as SPTF and Cerise, no costs are involved for FSPs. They join the pathway for free uh, and they are provided with this library of resources for free on our website. The costs involved will certainly be in, the, in this stage, particularly the cost of hiring probably a third party to um, conduct the assessment or to conduct technical assistance um, and obviously the cost of probably implementing any, any elements of the action plan. But the, the CP pathway from our side is totally free for FSPs.
So if we, obviously we can also, you can, if you have questions arising along the way, uh, please write them down in the chat and, and we can continue uh, and I'll answer them later on. So we can move to the step three, which is about demonstrating progress and achievement. Uh, this stage uh, is of course, of course, um, uh not compulsory it is about certification and it's for those uh, fsps who want to show their level of achievement so certification stays continues but we have updated slightly the methodology for certification formally for those who were not familiar with the smart campaign system smart campaign certification um, would be a kind of pass fail system where you are granted certification only if you reach 100 percent of all the client protection indicators and if you are missing one or two or several indicators indicators you were not certified at with this new methodology we have now three levels of recognition that you can see here on the right side which are bronze silver and gold levels which now allows fsps to demonstrate their progress along the way and show improvement towards full, towards full compliance the gold level that we have now requires 95% of compliance instead of 100% prior um, in, with the smart campaign system. So that uh, this can cater regional specificities or different business models that at the time didn't allow FSPs to comply fully with the set of indicators for the certification. The validity of a certification is now of three years. Um, previously, it was four years, and at the in in the at midterm after two years, there was what we call a surveillance audit, which would then extend the certification for another two years. Now it's three years, and there is no surveillance audit. And the key change i would say in the certification methodology here is um, the identification of minimum requirements in order to be granted any kinds of certification so we have identified together with the certification bodies and a pool of experts um, some indicators that are considered as non-negotiable to be granted any kind of certification and they are divided in these three subsets that you can read we have the entry level indicators which are at this time 40 entry indicators these indicators look at the practice that FSPs have in terms of client protection, rather than looking at policy. So the idea is really at the entry level, we want to have to vet that FSPs have already a habit with their clients um, and that those practices are already there in place and the policy can follow um, further, further along the pathway. Then we have the progress level indicators. These are an additional, an additional 20 indicators at this time. They are the minimum that were identified by asset owners and social investors for them also for, to um, consider their investees and, um, and recognize a knowledge, a certification. These progress level indicators are required to get a silver certificate in addition to the entry ones. And then finally, we have the advanced level indicators. It's an additional 23 indicators that confirm practices with policies and processes so that we ensure that the FSPs has a full management system in place to mitigate the risks um, to clients. Um, 
and this uh, these advanced level indicators are added to the requirements uh, of entry and progress in order to be granted a gold certificate. We also, in these advanced level indicators, we also uh, made sure to include those indicators that um, are key and as well non-negotiable are key and that couldn't be in complied with in, in, in this little buffer that we have in the 5% uh, of uh, between 95 and 100%. Um, today, we have obviously, because Smart Campaign stopped granting certifications in April 2021 this year, so uh, we have a lot of FSPs who are smart certified, we call them, uh, these and who have an active certification today. These FSPs are automatically um, provided a gold level because obviously they have reached 100% of compliance. We have a specific page uh, where FSPs who join the pathway and who join it with a, a, a proof of assessment that is a certification, we have a difference. They are listed together with the FSPs that are committed to implement, but they are as well listed on a different page um, that is dedicated to certified institutions. Um, before I take questions, I just um, finish on the certification. Today, um, we have three certification bodies uh, that have been approved by SPTF and Cerise in a joint committee. Um, so the, 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 the cards have been um, re, re, re battu, sorry for my French clink. <laughs> um, so uh, there, is, there, ha there has been a new process developed um, where Cerise and SPTF uh, provide, give grant an approval to conduct and issue client protection certifications. Um, today, Cerise and SPTF are not and uh, in, involved in individual certifications as smart campaign used to be. Um, the approval is done at the very beginning with or entities that have applied with us to be certification bodies. And then um, the responsibility and everything um, for individual certifications is done by the, search, the approved certification body. What we vet for is that the, the entity follows these principles that you can see on the right uh, hand side, and we ensure that um, certifications are conducted under our common framework included in the universal standards, and we also ensure that the quality control, control system and um, are, are in place in the organization and that there is capacity and experience to perform client protection certifications. To date, um, we have the, I, I, I said three certification bodies. These are uh, the re following rating agencies. There's MFR, uh, there's MCRIL, and inclusion social rating. All these, um, the, these names, as we may approve uh, more certification bodies in the future, these names are listed also on our website at the bottom of the, the step three uh, webpage that we will provide link to. Okay, so at this stage, I, I, I know we do have those certification bodies uh, here in the room, uh, which is nice. Uh, so if you have any questions about certification, please put your microphone on camera so we can see you and I'm, I'm ready for questions here. Okay, in the chat box, 
Uh, Hema, how do you certify the hybrid model, which has partially digitized its processes or have one digital product like remittances? Um, that's a very good question up to today, and that I haven't mentioned it, but today the certification framework uh, is the same framework and the same set of indicators as uh, the one smart campaign had, and uh, this is still the case uh, this year and will certainly still be the case uh, at the beginning of next year. So, um, as you highlighted, the current certification certification framework doesn't really account for um, these specific products, remittances. Um, there are, however, uh, digital credit guidelines that can help inform um, certification. Um, I guess that as a rate oh, agency yes. and certification body, uh, we, uh, can you please, can you please yes. all mute yourself? Thank you. Um, so what I would say is to use your best judgment uh, in in considering these products uh, in in the in the analysis or or not. Uh, I do believe the concepts of client protection do apply to any kind of financial service. Uh, financial product and any kind of financial service providers. So the idea is really to ensure that the organization is, um, is, is ensuring that there is no harm done to clients in any of their operations and interactions with their clients. Thank you. Um, then we have a question from Pierre. Can individual consultants become approved CP assessors? Uh, yes, absolutely. As assessors, uh, individual consultants are highly uh, invited to uh, join uh, this, and, and this would refer then to the SPM Pro Network. Um, for this, I would advise you to contact Cerise, who is in charge of the SPM Pro Network. Um, we are currently, it is not yet defined exactly, there is an SPI qualified auditor process already for client protection. This is currently being designed. There is nothing specific right now, but we will have uh, a program for client protection in particular as well. However, because you asked the question, um, and just to make to be very clear, um, we do not uh, approve individual consultants to become client protection certification bodies. We approve only uh, entities who have a, a, a legal um, registration. And uh, for the moment, we only approve rating agencies to be very precise. And that's for the moment and things can change in the future. Then we have a question from Eve. Hello, Eve. What advice do you have for investors to define social covenants in relation to FSP certification? Uh, excellent question indeed uh, that we, we get uh, quite often. Um, I do advise to use the steps of the pathway and adapt uh, because now we have this granular approach that uh, allows measuring where an FSP stands in the pathway, we can, I believe, adapt um, our covenants to uh, where they stand, to the level of maturity, to the size, to the country where the FSP operates, and um, go into the details of where the FSP stands in terms of client protection to always encourage improvement. So not ask for a too high um, 
uh, achievement, uh, like um, we used to see several times, um, investors requiring a, a smart certification, which some FSPs couldn't reach. Now the idea is to choose and adapt in this pathway, and 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 if possible, on a case by case basis. That's that would be my advice. But I'm not uh, in your shoes, and I do believe that. Um, uh, uh, they're, 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 these, these are questions that should be discussed internally. But commitments, some investors require commitments, uh, some, uh, and some other investors require either bronze, silver, or gold certification. So the choice, the choice is there. I have another question from Hans. How to manage the timelines with MFIs operating under COVID lockdown, country level environments? Um, well, uh, since here, I mean, if, if it refers specifically to the client protection pathway, um, there is no specific timeline uh, involved in the pathway, except for the two six, the first step, which requires six months to provide a, a proof of self-assessment. Um, I do believe that uh, six months is a large window, uh, window enough for FSPs to conduct a self-assessment. So on, on this specific matter, I don't see the lockdowns as being uh, a constraint to join the pathway and move along the path. And then um, these lockdowns have obviously a high impact on plenty of other things in operations, but the, I, I guess this is this is not really it's off topic uh, for here. Just to yeah to 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 um, summarize, there is no timeline given by us as SPTF and Cerise to move along this pathway. The timeline is really either self-given by the FSP or uh, given by the investor who will uh, ask that within this amount of months or year, they reach this or that level. Okay, Joris, thanks for the comments, added comments. I have another question. How can FSPs combine an external social audit with a CP certification? Um, so social audit, um, do you mean Hans, uh, do you mean an SPI audit or a social rating? Which is not exactly the same thing. Do you want to? No, I, I, mean an, I mean an SPI audit. Um, audit, social audit. An SPI audit, okay. Um, what um, then for SPI? Uh, well, we have the rating agencies who are present here are also. Um, totally capable of conducting SPI audits. So uh, because CP certification is really only made and conducted by certification bodies, um, it could be certainly combined and that's a matter of talking to them. Uh, another option, if we really talk about SPI, um, is to either self-assess SPI or um, ask for an external consultant, an SPI qualified auditor to come and help in this SPI assessment and through the assessment of all the social performance indicators, because SPI includes the client protection indicators, have asked for a specific focus on client protection because the FSP wants to go to certification. Um, I've seen this uh, several times, SPI conducted with a focus on client protection to prepare for certification. But this would only be a preparation and client protection for the certification should be anyway conducted in a separate step by certification bodies. Hama, yes, please unmute yourself. <laughs> no, so I just wanted to kind of answer that question that we've also done this, uh, as you were saying, we've done the social um, rating, the SPI four and the consumer protection together. Uh, but of course, of course, not the certification, but there is the scope of combining. And I think the cost is also reduces. That's like you take a dipstick down the 
uh, down when you go on the consumer protection uh, and then it's possible to do the SPI4 plus consumer protection assessment. Great, thank you. As I said, you have the right people here, so don't hesitate to ask all your questions. Um, we can uh, just, there's um, a few words that I wanted to highlight, but I believe that you've heard that there are many benefits uh, for FSPs to join the pathway. First, it's free, as I said earlier. There is public recognition for the FSP of their commitment, of their progress uh, on our website through the newsletters that go out to the different stakeholders. FSPs uh, have then a clear roadmap for what to do next. They are connected by signing up to our pathway to the community of organizations that work in the same mindset as them. They will be, through the newsletters, invited to the CP trainings that we will develop. As I mentioned, don't miss the client protection implementation series that is going on. We already had the very first session and uh, we are holding, oh, I'll get to that later. And um, so that, that's for the FSP side. Uh, and uh, I address this message specifically to uh, the MFI Association that is present in the room, and maybe we some others joined uh, joined in the meantime. Um, this is a key a key message that you can um, transfer to your member FSPs in your country. Um, especially, we don't have today any specific pathway for networks and microfinance associations, but we do uh, consider that associations are key for um, the industry in the sense that they will they can serve as ambassadors of this kind of protection pathway, of the communication that's and SPTF are having around this client protection pathway and uh, networks would be um, those uh, uh, key communication intermediaries to encourage uh, FSPs to join the pathway and also to advocate with regulators, uh, obviously, uh, based on this pathway um, and, and, and spread the word. So that's for uh, this side of the coin. And then uh, we also do have investors and funders in the room. Uh, and I hope uh, that you've already identified the, all the, the benefits um, of um, joining us with this pathway. Um, you will have an easy way, or you have already an easy way to identify committed providers by going on our website and seeing the list. Um, you also benefit from the fact that we support these uh, FSPs who have joined in improving their practices. Uh, with the assessment tools uh, that we have and that FSPs can use, uh, you have an automatic gap analysis, and this can help investors who have technical assistance facilities um, identify those uh, needs and focus the technical assistance on these gaps. Um, and as, as I said to Eve earlier, uh, these various steps can be used in funding agreements uh, to ensure commitment and stimulate progress. So for the investor side, we do hope that you will encourage your investees to join the pathway, at least take this Step one, which is filling a form, and this takes 15 minutes, not more, and then conducting, if it's not, it hasn't been done in the past, conducting a self-assessment and disclosing it to SPTF uh, so that they are listed. This could be just simply the first, very first step of um, you spreading the word. And uh, we have on our website a communication kit where you have have in three languages uh, the, um, the, the, the wording, the language that you can use to uh, send to your investees to, to encourage your portfolio to join the pathway. 
key resources here. Um, so there is the main web page for client protection that can be found on the SPTAF website. So here I will ask uh, some support from Emmanuel, the host, if you could um, put in the chat box the various links that are here, in fact. Uh, so we have the, um, the client protection pathway key web page uh, at first, and then there's the detailed list of client protection standards and indicators that is in several languages to be able to get familiar already with these standards. Um, there is a link to be able to sign up for the CP pathway. Uh, we provide you with the link to F the list of FSPs who are who have already joined and who have demonstrated their commitments to client protection. There is what we call the CPSAT tool, client protection self-assessment tool, which is totally aligned with the client protection certification framework and uh, can be then allow you to um, do your self-assessment or have a third party assessment uh, in order to prepare uh, for client protection excellency. You still have, and this existed already before, a large resource center on the SPTF website. And um, eventually there's a new page hosting the Client Protection Implementation Series webinar. Um, as I said, we've conducted the first webinar, which was basically as today an introduction to the CP pathway. And we are holding um, the second module of this of these of the series on uh, December 2nd open your agenda uh, but you will receive if you sign up to our newsletter you will receive this information December 2nd we will talk about preventing over indebtedness and once again these uh, implementation series are focused uh, on uh, the way on F4, they are created for these FSPs who are small and medium sized, who are not yet very familiar with what client protection um, implies as putting in place implementing in the operations. Uh, so this can be very helpful for those who start on the journey towards client protection. And uh, finally, we have this communications kit in three languages that I mentioned, and we would be very glad if you could help spread the word. Uh, in this kit, you'll find um, ready ready written emails to investees for example or to partners you also you will also find social media um uh, wording and paragraphs that you can post also uh from your side you will find also if you support uh as a, a stakeholder if you support this pathway you will also find the words uh, that you can put on your website uh, to mention that you support the client protection pathway. Do we have um, any further questions here? I, I have reached the end of my, 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 my presentation, so I'm happy to, to listen to your questions if you want to unmute yourself, which will make it, I guess, easier. Hello, good good evening from Cambodia. Good evening, Randy. Yeah, uh, I have a I have a question from uh, since I am new to uh, Microfinance Association in Cambodia, and uh, I would I would be interested to understand more about this uh, part where how how the lesson learned from smart campaign uh, have put into this. And what, what seemed to be uh, my suggestion is, uh, I, I, I congratulate, this is a great global framework. And I, I would be uh, interested to, 
to be more partnering with uh, with this important work from Cambodia. However, I, I, I would be interested to understand more how uh, this pathway process could be uh, harmonized with the existing country contact or region contact, because each country regulator might have a different uh, uh, perspective and practice and how we go about in uh, building this uh, sustainable and, and make sure that it's aligned with the existing framework in, in the field, like in a country level, so it can be uh, more sustained. Uh, so this is what I want to learn more, yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you indeed. And, um, and yes, as you know, we are um, very willing to uh, support the great work that you've uh, you've started uh, in order to to indeed uh, introduce and harmonize uh, uh, practices for a more responsible uh, market in your country. Um, we are. Uh, we 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 are working. We we are not. The pathway is not specifically designed for regulation. However, regulators can um, rely on this pathway uh, to understand that FSPs who are working with these kind of protection standards are FSPs who have responsible practices towards their clients. Uh, I, do, I do believe, and they are called universal standards, uh, because I do believe that they um, the concepts and the ideas uh, that are um, outlined in these kind of protection standards apply to any context and country. Um, now they are very operational. Uh, I admit, I, I understand uh, your point, very uh, focused on what FSPs need to implement. So as um, so the, the idea here, and, and, and Smart Campaign had done it already in India, uh, is indeed to work together on a code of conduct uh, that remains uh, more achievable, I would say, at the country level, and more, and, and so that the buy-in from uh, any kind of financial service provider, whether they provide microfinance products or banking products, uh, so that they there is buy-in from whatever financial service provider, and so that it it is not it it remains consistent and achievable and um, and people feel comfortable committing to such a code of conduct. So I, I reiterate our will, wish uh, to continue working with you on this and don't hesitate to keep in touch with me offline um, and, and we, will, we will continue the, the work and, and support, support what you've already started. Thank you, yeah. Do we have any further questions? I put here my email and contact. I'll write it in the, in the chat box so that you can take it from there while people think about their further questions. Well, um, then if there are no, no more questions, I believe we can wrap up here. I would like to thank you all very much for your participation, for your comments, for your questions. Um, I would like to encourage you to go visit the website and then spread the words around you and um, help us uh, see the industry move towards this, this um, pathway and join, join us uh, to, for an, for an industry-wide uh, spreading the words. Thank you, everybody, and have an excellent end of conference today.